ultimately I see the divine plan. And I know you talk about divine intervention in your book too, of guiding me and protecting from some situations that were just not meant to touch my spirit. And when you're in it, it's harder to see it that way. And I'm curious for you, what were some of the tools and some of the divine interventions that supported you in transforming those stories? I love this. I lo- I've been, this is so funny because, you know, these things always come together at the right time because I've been thinking about all the divine interventions of my life this week in particular, because I look back in the same way and I go, I was spared. Like, thank yes. God that certain things missed me. You know, like you look back and you go, oh, if they, if I had been given what I thought I wanted, I wouldn't have been ready. Or I would have, it would have taken me on a path that was going to really mess up where I was going. And, you know, my work right now is really in holding that belief and trusting that in the moment versus having to see it in retrospect. You know, like I don't want to have to see it once it all makes sense. I'm now trusting like if I get a rejection or something doesn't happen right now, Right now, I'm going to trust that that was absolutely not meant for me just because it didn't come together, like not for any other reason that I need to understand, but because it actually didn't come into fruition. Therefore, it's not meant for me. So, I mean, there are so many divine interventions. Like, I think that, uh, you know, if we're going and talking about my husband, for example, I mean, I met him in Paris, like in Paris, France. I was ready to leave. I had been there a month. I was traveling. I had no idea why I needed to travel, but my soul was like, you have to go to Paris. And I was like, what? You know, I worked for myself. I worked from my computer. So I was still working and everything, but I was like a location independent, you know? And I, I was like, I guess I got to go to Paris. I don't know. Like 2011, <laughs> I have to be in Paris. And I, you know, it was so random. Um, And I go and within a month I had, and I really wanted to be single. Like I loved being single, to be honest. Like once I got through all the, like kind of let go of what that meant, I actually really liked my independence. And I do think that I would not have like built the independence that I have now, even within my marriage, had I not been single for so long. Like I have a lot of those same friends who were in and out of relationships all the time. Their lives have been since then, since high school, since middle school, defined by their relationships. And I made sure for, and that's fine. I mean, that for some people, that's great. For me, that was not going to be me. You know, like it's not going to define my whole life is who I'm with. So, um, you know, I felt that there was a divine intervention in bringing my husband to me. I mean, he didn't even speak English. Like we just met in Paris and somehow me, the okay, most got another person details. ever. How, how did you meet? Let's, <laughs> let's hear the deets. And I what know, language so did you we speak? Were, I just, okay. We spoke like this really halted French, um, but he's from Tunisia. And when I met him, um, we, it was outside, it was like a normal Monday outside the Notre Dame cathedral. And we walked by each other and we caught eyes and he goes, bonjour. And like my whole body went into like, I it like when it was on fire and I was like, what is happening? I've never had, I mean, and that was the time, you know, like, the, the Europeans, you know, they're a little bit more effusive. So I ha- it's not like I hadn't been hit on before. So I knew that I had been, this was something different. And I like, when people say that they, their knees went weak, like my knees went weak. And he wasn't like, it wasn't because he was, and he was really good looking, but it wasn't because he was like so good looking. It was just this like connection. And somehow we go from not speaking the same language to work inseparable, inseparable. We didn't spend a day apart from that moment. It was the most bizarre thing. And he has continued to be like a great teacher for me in terms of how to love, how to love with abandon. Like, I think he's been a great teacher in exposing me to different cultures because he has a different culture. We've traveled. He's got a much different way of being than an American man. Um, you know, a typical kind of American man. 
And he's got a little bit of a European influence. Tunisia is very European. Um, they were, you know, occupied by France for a long time. So very French, which I love the French way of living. And he has been just like a steady support for me for so long. And it just like was one of those divine moments. And I've had so many of those. I mean, I've had so many of those where it's like something just completely falls apart that I am, you know, even like before I got this book deal for Radically Content, I I broke it off with my literary agent before I got the book deal because I was like, I'm done. This is not working. Like there was a divine intervention that told me like this partnership is done. It's not bringing anything to fruition. You have to see that. Like you have to see that the rejections are not making sense anymore to you. And I was like, okay. And I followed that, had no idea. And then all of a sudden a publisher out of nowhere comes into my email and says, are you interested in working on a book? And it was like the exact kind of experience, book deal, everything that I could possibly want. Like it was better than I could ever imagine. It was just like, it's author first. We'll, you know, we want you to be our like standout lead title, all of this stuff. And I was like, I've been wanting this for so long. And I'm just going through rejection after rejection, which it was meant to be, you know, like even the rejections had it worked out with that agent, you know, like I look at it, I'm like, I was so disappointed that it hadn't worked out with that agent. And I was so afraid people were telling me, you know, it's really hard to get another agent. Be careful. You know, people are, they're always so like, and I'm like, I don't subscribe to this stuff. Like it'll be what it'll meant. It's meant to be, you know, but I was a little nervous of course. And I was disappointed because I really wanted it to work out with her. And she was very like well-known. And I was just like, for whatever reason, I wish you no ill will, but this is not working. Something with this is not working. And I think my whole career would have been totally different had I stayed with her because now it's opened up and been so expansive. And it felt, I mean, I've had so many of those, those, those interventions where it's like, I get that message and it's, it's just, the answer is so clear. And it usually comes from, I mean, I don't know if this happens to you, but I, I really get pretty deep in the woods of the indecision and I get anxious and I feel really lost and I don't know what to do. And then the clarity comes just at the most perfect time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, now, now go, (laughs) like make the (sighs) call, send the email, do the thing. And it's like, oh, okay. Yes. I, I get that. So, I mean, I feel like you and I are similar in that there's a there's like a spiritual and there's a practical, like I show up, I do the work, I do the things, but there's a spiritual part and a magic that I can't explain that works in the background and that I've learned to really, really, really trust, especially this year, because the more that I've trusted, the more things have arranged themselves and come together in ways that have been a hundred percent better than I could have ever forced or planned for. It's so easy to say no to something when there's something else already on the horizon, but it's so much harder to say no and trust the void and trust that the universe always, uh, I had a guest on my podcast, Del Paro yesterday, and she says, uh, the universe only gives upgrades. And I love that. And it really takes a lot of courage to trust that void and to trust that there's always something better coming. And um, it's an exercise, you know, and it's scary. But in my experience, it gets easier each time we say yes to the void. I love that. I love the term saying yes to the void because I think I've noticed that the way that I am the universe wants me to always say yes to the void. Like they, they, they don't give me the next thing ever. You know, I want it so bad. Like I want the certainty so bad. And they're just like, all the magic is in the void and the uncertainty 
and the trust because you're totally right. I mean, also it's so easy when it's like, it's not something you want that bad or it's, you know, or there is the next thing lined up or, you know, you, when people are like supporting it and you know, this is going to happen and, you know, but when you don't have any of that lined up, I mean, I actually now, I don't know about you, but I get like, I'm now excited when I say yes to the void because I know it's better. It's always so much better. Like I can trust that now. It took me a long time. It it was always like, oh, I see that that worked out. I fought it. (laughs) I like really went against it. But now I see that it has worked out. And now I'm like, I want the void all the time. (laughs) Like I don't want to know. I want, I want life to surprise me. My brain tries to make plans and this brain doesn't know what to do. You know, like the universe is bigger. They have bigger and better plans for me than what my little brain, which usually like, you know, your plans come from comparing to someone else, seeing like, oh, maybe that's what's possible for me. And I think like the void, what's so beautiful about that is like, you are really giving into the infinite, the impossible in a good way. Yes. All right. You're speaking my language here. The infinite possibilities, <laughs> the impossible becoming possible. That's what saying yes to the unknown and the void represents because you're right. The worlds that we can construct for ourselves and the ideas of what we want only exist based on what we've seen. But our mind can create something that we didn't even know was possible. So that's why I love books. I love listening to podcasts. I love watching YouTube channels of people who move me because that shows me like all these new possibilities. You know, these moments when you're listening to an audio book and all of a sudden there's like a whole new world feels like opened up and these old possibilities and all of a sudden the world and life is this gamified version of itself where all we have to do is show up and trust the void and have fun. (laughs) 